This is the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, presented by Benjamin Moore on News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. Well, Betsy, we're going to talk about something really fun right now. <laughs> Bats. We were just watching. This is interesting because we were just watching an Andy Griffith episode. Yes. And I showed you this. Uh-huh. And Don Knotts is going into a cave. Yeah. And he told Thelma Lou to watch out for the bats because they're going to get in your hair and uh-huh. lay eggs <laughs> and make you crazy. So I yeah. decided that we needed to check with our guests because we're in the studio with David Pop from Rose Pest Solutions, the district yep. manager. Right. And Dale Hodgson, the regional technical manager. Again, from Rose Pest Solutions. So we're going to dig into this bat thing and get some answers. Yeah. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. You're welcome. Pleasure. Um, so first of all, are the bats going to make a nest in my hair and lay eggs? Let's just clear this up And right make now. her crazy. That was and the And make other part. me crazy. <laughs> to ease everybody's minds, no, the bats do not uh, lay in wait, <laughs> waiting for somebody with the tallest hair to get into. They okay. just oh, simply do goodness. not do that. Well, all if right. it was the tallest hair, that'd be Dan. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're out of luck. That's true. But, so I guess from what I've heard, you guys start getting calls this time of year about bats. People are starting to see them coming out or they're starting to see them perhaps around their home, in their home. Why is that? Well, the bats are hibernating most of the winter. They they actually started hibernating about uh, toward the end of October. Oh. Um, and they started and they've been sleeping mm-hmm. this whole time. Now it's time for them to wake up. Uh, because the insect populations are up again, or they're starting to climb. Once the food is out, the bats will be out as well, and they'll begin their feeding and rearing their young. So what all are they looking for to eat? I mean, I've seen stink bugs all winter long. Oh, so you're hoping that they're going to be scoping out the stink bug population? I can always hope, but I have a lot less. I will just give you a quick plug here, David, because I had you guys come out, and I have exponentially less than I have oh, in good. previous years, but good, good, there good. are a few little thing. stragglers. <laughs> so are they going to eat my stink bugs? They won't consume them entirely. They may try one or two of them, but they're called stink bugs for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, not only do they stink, they do not taste very well. Yeah, they're really I terrible. know that because one died in my water glass and I didn't know it in the middle of the night and I took a swig. Oh, oh. That is disgusting. <laughs> I feel bad for anything that tries them. So, what are they eating if they're well, not bats, eating bats? Bats are insectivores. They all our species of bats that we have around here um, eat insects. They don't eat hair. They don't suck your blood. They don't do anything <laughs> like that. And I, their favorite food is really is the night flying moth. Oh. The large, juicy night flying moths that we mm-hmm. see. That's what they're after the most. They hmm. will feed on smaller insects. Used to we used to say that. Bats would eat 600 mosquitoes an hour, Mm -hmm. but now we're saying that bats will eat about a thousand mosquito-sized insects in an hour. Oh, wait a minute. So they're not eating the mosquitoes? They're not eating the mosquitoes to get rid of them or anything like that. Is this something that that they've intentionally changed their patterns? No, they haven't changed. We've changed our knowledge. We just didn't We, we know better now. What, what a disappointment that is. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't mind the juicy night flying moth. But I really detest the mosquito. Yeah. And it's a little sad to hear that the yeah, bats not are not taking care of those. Or as many mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, Dale, what we should do, before we go too much further, because there, I've got a bunch of questions about this whole exclusion thing and what we can do and when we need to do it. But when we contacted David about this particular interview, he suggested you because Dale has, David, a whole bunch of letters Behind his name, right? Yes, he has. He's full of letters. He is. <laughs> he is one of five of our board certified entomologists at, at Rose, uh, but he carries a distinction that is quite the honor because he's one of twenty five individuals in the United States that carries the CWCP, which is a certified wildlife control professional. It sounds simple, but it's quite extensive of what he had to do to be able to uh, get this. And only 25 people in the United States, that's that's quite amazing. Mm-hmm. That's, he's certified through the National Wildlife Control Operators Association. Which is another string of letters. Mm-hmm. The N-W-C-O-A. Yes, that was COA. <laughs> yeah. Did I yes. do that right? You did. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Dale has become our company's go to wildlife person uh, and, and professional. He is, his, his knowledge is very extensive, and, and we're, we're very very proud to have them. So. Because you guys do more than just 
bug control. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, sometimes right. that's the idea that comes across. Mm-hmm. But you mentioned wildlife. Dale, mm-hmm. what exactly do you get involved with? Are you wrestling gators? And well, stuff? I'm not wrestling gators or anything Would like that. Would you like but, to? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm interested in all kinds of things. And so, I so, think that is a yes. But I have get I have gotten calls about snakes. We mm-hmm. do raccoons, squirrels, possums, the usual mm-hmm. stuff. Bats as well. Um, I think the most exotic thing I've ever done was pull a king snake out of a dormitory room that had escaped well, from sounds... three floors above it. Relatively mm. exotic yeah. or yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. You want it terrifying. was a six-foot king snake, and you really didn't want that in your dorm room if you didn't want it to be there. Yeah. So how lucky for you to be one of the well, the few people that, that get to be involved in that stuff because you're an expert. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well... Did you go to a special school for wrestling snakes? No, I did not go to that came that came the real education started the day I graduated. <laughs> and then the real education started the day you grabbed a hold of one end of that snake. That's correct. And you That's have to grab the right real. end. Right. Oh, How I got into this, I had been putting insects in jars and catching critters ever since I was a little kid. Very cool. And I just Managed to turn that into a lifelong career. That's not wow. a bad thing. We appreciate it, <laughs> let me tell you. All right, now wait, let's go back to bats yeah, because let's... that's where we were. Do they carry rabies? Because yes, is that why we should be concerned if they are in our space? Well, you, there's a couple of reasons why we should be concerned if they're in our space. One is, yes, they do carry rabies, okay. but the populations that carry the rabies really run maybe 2 to 5% at most okay. where people run, have trouble is they'll see a bat lying on the ground mm-hmm. uh, and they'll try to handle it they don't know how to handle it they'll pick it up why um, would they do that well people people are kind generally they oh, want to make, so they're trying to they're be nice, trying to, be nice to the animal and they'll pick it up get bitten and then that potentially could be a rabies threat mm-hmm. so we should have the bat tested and the person um, has to take appropriate measures after that. What about our pets and things like that? Like my dog likes to pick up things, and what if she comes in with a if bat? A, <laughs> if, a, if an animal, if if an animal carries a bat home, like a dog or your cat, mm-hmm. would bring back a little trophy to show you, and it's a bat. Mm-hmm. That bat really needs to be tested for um, for the animal's sake. Okay, um, and those bats can be sent to um, Michigan State Virology. That can be googled. Too, mm-hmm. and they would give you exact protocol on how to prepare that. The bat can be, will have to be sent in whole, and it'll be tested, okay. and you'll get redu- results back very quickly. Now, if we get bit by a bat, is it the same, same protocol? Exact same thing. Do we have to kill it? The, or well, yeah, yeah. The bat <laughs> should. The bat needs to be killed. Okay. Um, which is going to be hard for a homeowner to do, but in however that's decided upon right. is that the head cannot be injured in any way. Because that's what's tested. That's what's the... tested. The brain brain tissue is tested, and that head has to be intact. So that's if we're bitten, that's if our animal handles it. Are those Correct. the only main concerns? Well, if there are people, usually, the skin, has usually to be broken? the skin doesn't necessarily have to be broken. If oh, somebody, right. if somebody were in a room sleeping, or a mm-hmm. little, a, a little one, a mm-hmm. child were in a room sleeping, okay. and there's a bat flying around in there, or a bat hanging on the wall, and you hadn't been in there the whole time to see this bat, that bat should be tested. Um, there's a potential that the bat could have crawled across that person. Could have crawled across oh. their skin or their mouth mm-hmm. or something to that nature. And that's how rabies is transmitted. Oh. So that bat would have to be captured. Captured, euthanized, euthanized. sent in for testing. Sent in for testing. And we can get all that information online. Yes. Should we ever have that situation occur? That's correct. Somebody's first call to, first call to make would be your local health department, and they would be more than oh, happy okay. to instruct you. So if we have them in the house, if we find them in the house, our best bet is to just leave them alone and get a hold of you guys. We would prefer that you would call us to handle your bats, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, a bat that's in a room, gets in your house, or you may have a colony of them in your attic or in the walls and things. You may hear scratching over the winter. Um, you know, We can exclude those, but we have to do that at the right time. We had one in our house a couple years ago, three years ago. Oh, my goodness. No, it's longer than that. doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't well, it matter. does because I was less mature. So that is very important. But the kids made a video of me dealing with the bat. You know, and as I'm walking up the steps, because they've told me where he is. They've seen him in the upstairs. And I've got a Rubbermaid or a Tupperware thing and a little cardboard slide underneath it that I'm going to put it over him and okay. get him out. Okay? So I'm going up the steps. And, and the, there's this video. 
and I'm all cool and collected. Guys, don't big deal. Dad, you're so brave. I said, yeah, this is what dads do, okay? We do this stuff. Did it fly at your real. face? No, he stayed right there. But you can watch the color drain from my face <laughs> as I approach him. And then I'm trembling as I'm trying to control the little cardboard slider. And then he moves, and the whole thing fell apart. And I realized very quickly, I got him outside, and I was unharmed, and the children... After you know a number of therapy sessions are fine, right. we learned let the experts deal with them. Is now the time? Because you said we're we're starting to see them now, but now isn't the time to really start dealing with it correctly? Correct. Correct. Now is not the time to do exclusion work. Although, let's for an example, let's say we have you have bats in your attic. If the bats are getting into the living space and we see where they're coming in from, yes, we can stop them from doing that. Mm -hmm. We cannot exclude them from going in and out, though, just now. Because what happens is in the bat life cycle, bats mate in the fall. But the females don't, quote unquote, get pregnant until the spring. So they're just now going to start having their young maybe in another four weeks. Okay. And what happens at that point is when the bats, in their normal course of flight time, bats will leave their roost, fly, feed, come back. They don't carry the young with them. Mm-hmm. If we were to exclude the bats now, the bats would leave and not be able to get back into the roost, and the young would die, and we, we don't want that. Uh, bats are very beneficial and misunderstood creatures. Okay. Well, that sounds like a challenge. Uh, so yes. with that said, we're going to go to a break. Can you guys hang with us? Sure. And I want to find out exactly why they're so beneficial. Don't you want to know? Yes, and why they're so sadly misunderstood. I have my guesses. Well, we're going to find out all of that in just a few minutes. So stay with us. If you want to take your DIY skills up a rung, the Repco Light Home Improvement Show is here to give you a boost on News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. And we're back. I'm Dan Hansen. And I'm Betsy Thompson. And we are in the studio with Dale Hodgson and David Pop from Rose Pest Solutions. And David, you've been here a number of times. We've talked about all kinds of bugs mm-hmm. and what to do with them. In fact, we've got one of our managers at our uh, the manager at our Plainfield store has expressly said that we have to stop talking about bugs because it <laughs> yeah. literally freaks them out. Mm-hmm. But we've had a lot of fun having you here because it's helping us understand some of this stuff and be able to solve some of these problems. Now, yeah. we're talking about bats right now and nothing is really I don't know many things that are more disconcerting than sitting in the living room having a great time, watching the tigers, and all of a sudden there's this flopping around the room and you realize it's a bat and Mm -hmm. everything gets real, real fast. But at (laughs) the end of the last segment, Dale, you mentioned that bats are beneficial and and great little wonderful creatures. That's correct. Help me understand exactly what makes them so amazing. Well, bats are uh, the only mammal that actually flies on its own. The only thing close we have to that are flying squirrels and their gliders. Right. So they cheat. They are. They cheat a little bit. That, uh-huh. It is. That whole flying thing. I've always said that. That yeah. is such a cheat. Well, it's like penguins that are birds, but they don't really fly. They're cheaters, too. Yeah. They're so cheaters, the bats though. are the real deal. <laughs> yes, the bats are the real deal. They're mammals. They're mammals, correct. Okay. And they're not a rodent. A lot of people think bats are rodents, but they're not. They're their own group of animal. Uh, their their arms and legs have been modified with a membrane between them, and they are capable of sustained flight. But they're not rodents. They're not rodents. They look you, a little bit like They look it. a lot like a rodent. And there's uh, a German word, and if I pronounce this incorrectly, I apologize. Uh, der Fledermaus. Okay, yep. Is German for bat. Mm-hmm. And what that means is a flying mouse. Yeah, they do kind of look like They do look like that. Mice. But if you really, I would suggest that you just Google pictures of bats and look at their teeth. Yeah. They are not rodent teeth by any means. They look similar to canine, but they're not canine either. They're their own specific group. Okay, so they're flying mammals. What other things make them beneficial? Though? Well, they're beneficial. They do eat a lot of insects, and they do help manage that. You're not going to get rid of every mosquito in your yard mm-hmm. or never be bitten with another insect again because you have bats, but they do control the insect populations. Now, I know that there are different types of bats because i have seen those things in the amazon or whatever yes they have vampire blood sucking bats which are terrifying oh i don't want to ever want to see one of those <laughs> i would not go looking for oh, one good and then there are little teeny tiny bats that like hang on the undersides of leaves what kind of bats do we have here 
you have uh, this part of this part of Michigan. You have about nine species. Okay. And they range uh, from the smallest, which is a tricolor bat, which is up uh, up north mm-hmm. in the UP. They may weigh a quarter of an ounce, fully grown. Oh wow! Um, the most common bats that we have around here in this area are big brown and little brown. Mm-hmm. They're about a, they're anywhere from an ounce, ounce to one half. They're not very big. Now, when Even you said the big brown isn't very big, no, the big brown so is, is not a very cheat big. Name too? It's a cheat name too. It's a distinguish it <laughs> from the little grief. brown. I was um, assuming those were monsters. Now, when we get our calls, we know how big bats are. But usually when we have folks call us, they're in a panic, just like most people mm-hmm. are. They will describe a bat as being maybe three feet between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they seem bigger when they're all stretched out there. there. Are two, there are um, people, if, if you remember the movie Crocodile Dundee with oh, those yeah. bats, those mm-hmm. were actually bats and they weren't CGI or anything like that. They're real. They're flying foxes. And those oh. don't eat blood or anything either. They're pollinators. They eat fruit. And nectar. Oh, but they're absolutely terrifying. Contrary to popular belief, bats are not blind. They see very well, but th- when they hunt, um, they do click, which mm-hmm. is an audible sound, and they also use echolocation, which is not audible to us, but there are devices out there where you can bring that frequency down to an audible level. It is amazing to hear. Really? And that's that's basically how bats hunt. Well, it they will is use their echolocation. So interesting when you really, because you were mentioning, Dale, a video that you played where uh, tell me about this video because you had video slow motion video of bats actually catching their food yes and that's readily available out on the internet you can find that just google bats feeding and you will see them they're very good videos what they do is most people think that when bats hunt or when you see them out flying around Mm -hmm. they just grab the insects with their teeth right they really don't they wrap their bodies around them they use that wing membrane and they have a tail membrane that they curl around the insect and pull it up into its mouth that happens so fast you would never see that but on Hmm. high speed video it is an amazing thing to watch it sounds like how my kids grab a piece of cake when that's thrown (laughs) on the table it's just this full body lunge and then wrap around it and then the Uh pile starts right right uh sure now david let's get to some of the in the last little bit that we've got let's highlight what we can do and when you know now's not the time to exclude the bats if we have them in our home and we know where they're coming from we can at least block that off that's okay correct but when is the right time to get this problem resolved and how do we do it well, like Dale had said, the exclusion uh, part of of um, taking care of the, the bats is we generally will do it between July and the end of October. And what we would do is, is first off, it, we would apply a, um, uh, an apparatus, something similar, we, we call them bat cones, mm-hmm. where it allows the, the uh, bats to go out of the, the area where they're in, if it was in an attic or a soffit, but they cannot return back in there. So we would be excluding them from that area. Then after a period of time, we go back and we, we seal that area up. Once we, we want to make sure that all the bats are out of the area first before we do that. Um, so it's something similar as that, if there's large areas that we can uh, uh, exclude, we might be putting up hardware cloth to make sure that, that nothing uh, can actually get back in into those areas. And yeah. is it true that we shouldn't be killing bats if we do find them? We should trap them and put them outside and let them go? Or let an expert trap them. Or- well, yes, but if you have one in your house in the middle of the night, you may not want to wait. Yeah, don't call me. <laughs> the, the, I'm unreliable. Actually, the, the cardboard and the, the Tupperware container or the plastic container like that is not a bad way to do it. I would suggest, though, that if you do something like that, to wear a very heavy set of gloves. Like leather gloves? Leather gloves, yeah. Okay. I was wearing leather yes. underpants. <laughs> Are they like birds where if you touch them, like they say baby birds, if you touch them, then the mother doesn't want to have anything to do with them? Are bats like that Why too? Why would you want to touch them? To pick them up, to take them outside. No, you don't touch them. But does that do, do, do the no. baby bats? bats? No, no. First, first of all, the once the once the young bats are old enough to fly, and that's mm-hmm. why we wait so long to ex- do the exclusion work. Mm-hmm. That gives them a chance to grow and develop and fly on their own. 
Okay. So at that point, they're really not under the parent's care so okay. much anymore. Mm-hmm. So they're not, uh, you know, they're not like a bird. Or the, you know, that's just not okay. true. Right. Um, I don't suggest you handle bats unless you've been trained to do it. I've handled bats barehanded, but I've been trained over the years to do that. Why? Um, why? I <laughs> just do to a lot. Tough. I do. <laughs> to I do a lot like of things that people ask why. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're the same in that regard. He's like yeah. super brave, but I still get a lot of questions about why are you. doing Doing that. Yet not the same kind of no, why that he thing. gets. You mm-hmm. have barehanded. Oh, sure. But to handle a bat, uh, they're very fragile, actually. Uh, their wing membranes are ve- are thin. Mm-hmm. And I usually tell people not to handle them unless they know how, because if you damage that wing right. membrane, that okay. is not good for the bat at all. And we really do not want to harm our bats. Right. Well, I know we had one bat in the house another time. And this What's was the thing the, with bats. Well, I, we had a fair amount that would just get into the old house. But this one, that was the very first one. And he's flying around the living room, and my wife's freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. I got over it. Believe it or not, I really did. And I got a broom, and I was just trying to not hit him. I was trying to get him to go out the front door. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of moving him around the room. And then he would eventually, he was getting very tired. And so at one point, he clings to the crown molding, and he's just sitting there, and his little chest is heaving. And my wife says, Get him. He stopped. I said, He's resting. And we're going to give him a break because I bonded with him. (laughs) He couldn't maintain his height because he was so tired, and he zoomed right out the door. It worked really well. That's usually the suggestions we give the people if they have a bat flying around in a room. Open the windows. The bats don't want to be in there. They really mm-hmm. don't. They're they're out hunting. In most instances, they'll find those air currents, and they will go right back outside, and you'll be happy. They'll be oh, happy. Everybody will be happy. That was such a happy moment. And I, I didn't hurt them. I took care of my little bat friend. Mm-hmm. But, David, we're about at the end of this segment. If our listeners... Have issues with bats or concerns or questions or anything, you know, that you guys might help them with. How do they best get in touch with you guys? Well, they can call us directly at uh, in this area, 616-534-5493. They can also uh, reach us through our website at www.rosepestsolutions.com. And also any of the socials, YouTube, um, Twitter, the whole – any social. All right. Good deal. Betsy's made use of your services and bragged you up. I have. She is almost stink bug free. Almost. Working towards it. Just a few little stragglers. David and Dale, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.